Hello dear ski jumping family and a very warm welcome to our fourth of the hashtag classics live streams. We are broadcasting from the place where majesty, magic and also madness come together. And of course I'm talking about no other place than the mighty Planica in Slovenia. My name is Luis Huluch and I'm looking so much forward to be your commentator for this very special live stream. When we started the poll, we already knew we would be visitors in Planica, in the valley of the ski jumping hills in the northwest of Slovenia. But we didn't know which stream will it be. And uh, you guys out there have smashed the voting buttons once again and the outcome was surprisingly clear. You guys have voted for the 15th and last World Cup victory for Peter Preutz in course of the 2015-2016 season. By 66 to 34% this competition has won against uh, the legendary, uh, probably the mother of all ski flying competitions in 2005 where Jörn Ena Rumören sets the last world record here in Planica on 239 meters. So we are reviewing the grand finale of an outstanding season of the super champion, as they call him in Slovenia. It was a pure party on this weekend, which already started on the first day, also due to the fact that uh, one individual competition in Titisee Neustadt had to be canceled. And so for the first time in the long history of Planica, there were three individual competitions plus the team competition on the very last weekend of the season. And on Thursday, Peter Priots already collected his 14th win in course of the season ahead of Johan André Vorfang and uh, Robbie Kranjec, his teammate. And the same three guys also stood on the podium just one day later on Friday morning where Robbie Kranjec won his seventh and final World Cup competition in his long and successful career ahead of Peter Preutz and Johan André Vorfan took third position. And no matter at which exact location you are in this beautiful valley directly at uh, the Ponza mountain or on the foot of it or on the opposite side you have delicious view. It's a fascinating arena, a fascinating place and uh, totally outstanding. There is nothing like it in the whole world and it's probably one of the most advanced or rather said best equipped training centers in the whole world with uh, eight ski jumping hills of every single size actually. And this one here, the Snežena Kraljica, the Snow Queen, has written stories ever since it was built in 1969. And it was a beautiful Sunday in Planica, perfect conditions outside. The sun has came out and the valley has been waking up by over 30,000 spectators that have come here. The Litanica Bratov Gurishek is the ski jumping hill the 30 athletes at this World Cup final will have to jump. A K point of 200 meters, a hill size of 225 and the hill record set by Peter Preutz one year ahead of this very competition with 248.5 meters. The eagles are everywhere, but the number of them has decreased. And the biggest and most dominant 
in course of that season, obviously, was Peter Periots. There was no way to stop him. It was pure dominance by him. An outstanding season with records that uh, nobody has ever achieved before. Two Crystal Globes he already has secured ahead of this competition, no matter what would happen. And also the win at the Four Hills Tournament and also at the Ski Flying World Championships, which took place at Bad Mitzendorf in that season. So, since we are at the World Cup Final, the start list only consists of 30 competitors, nine different nations they were representing, and 21 of those are still active. It was also clear that uh, Priot's biggest of the small rivals, uh, Severin Freund, would take the second place after the outcome, just a little less than one year ahead of this competition, was a little different. A very dramatic ending of the season, which saw Freund as the overall World Cup winner with equal points results, but the German had won more individual competitions and so took the crystal globe but uh, Peter Priots totally turned it around in the 2015-2016 season and just destroyed his opponents. I, be, I think it's totally fair to say that. And as usual when jumping in the morning in Planitza the conditions are just fine, the wind is coming from the right direction. It is a nice bunch of headwinds, which was also the reason why Stanko Blodek, the first architect of a ski jumping hill here in uh, Planica, actually chose this location. It offered stable and safe conditions and also very enjoyable for all the athletes. No matter how tough the season has been, and now everyone just wants to pull out the most of what is left in your own energy store. If you were jumping literally every single competition from the beginning of the season, this was your 34th, only in the World Cup, we have to say. Because obviously additionally comes the Ski Flying World Championships, which would be another two competitions. So uh, this is an incredible amount. And Jan Matura of Czech Republic has the pleasure to do the first flights on this Sunday morning. Very close to the K-point line. 199 and a half meters for the Czech who was actually the only participant in this field who didn't score a World Cup point in ski flying in that very season. But obviously, since only 30 athletes were here at this competition, also that fact was erased. A lot of Polish fans always come here to Planica to support their athletes. I mean they're everywhere, but especially in Planica also they are 
Not invisible. Not at all. And Stefan Kula is giving them the first 200 meter ride of the day. At least uh, that was counted into a competition. 202 meters for the pole who was not jumping in the trial round before. I mean, you're doing so many flights on that hill if you qualify for the World Cup final on that weekend. You can definitely afford to leave the trial round out. Yeah, and uh, the tiredness is all around. And I think every one of you who has been in Planica already has an idea why. Ange Laniszek. And now let's have a look on the noise of the energetic and crazy crowd. Two hundred eight point five meters for the only nineteen year old Angela Nishek, the first ever youth Olympic game champion in uh, Innsbruck two thousand twelve, where those young athletes actually were jumping in Seefeld. And for him it was already great success to be a part of this World Cup final. It's a fine selection of the world's best ski jumpers and all of those who have managed to survive this long journey inside the season. Karl Geiger, it was the first season where he was able to score a World Cup podium. Finished second in Lahti, but was only slowly adopting to the ski flying hills. But look at that! That is a new personal best distance for the man from Oberstdorf. 219 meters. And so he improved his best distance by three and a half. He has just jumped before in Vikajunt. And not only the adrenaline kicks in, but also the hormones of happiness and joy. Maciej Kot. Season started very, very well for him. He took the over summer Grand Prix. And look at that! There we have the first flight over the hillsides, which was back then on 225 meters, as I've mentioned, but 231 also meant for him it's a new best distance he has ever jumped. He had some nice amount of headwinds, especially in the lower part, which didn't affect his flight system ever so much. And it's just uh, keeping the tension, trying to make yourself and your flight system as long as possible. And that's how it is and that's how it goes. And also uh, some female jumpers were with us. Sara Takanashi, the overall World Cup winner, as well as Maya Utic on rank number three and also her teammate Spieler Rogel. And of course, if one guy is beating the hillsides, the jury has to react. But uh, Walter Hofer already had more stressful days in his long career as FIS race director. That was the flight of uh, Stefan Laie, 210 and a half meters for the German. Well hit there. At the takeoff is definitely one of his strengths. 
But he always points out, yeah, flying, that could be a little better. But uh, we are curious to see on how he will come back after his torn ACL. He is progressing very, very good after his rehab. And maybe has a chance to jump again right at the start of the upcoming winter. Vincent de Combe-Sevoir, the only Frenchman consistently jumping in that season and also making it to the top 30. And he's definitely a great ski flyer. I mean, he is the record holder of his own country with 230.5 meters. Jumped it in Vika Jun that season and that never has been broken ever since. And when the flight went so well, he always was showing his joy. And believe it or not, even from the spot we saw just right now with the people, you have a fascinating view on what is actually happening here. David Kubatsky here. It was always an adventure trip with him on the ski flying hill. He always was drifting to the right hand side. If you were looking from his perspective. This year's For Hits Tournament winner. Still a totally different athlete. And it's crazy to see what uh, Stefan Horngacher actually formed out of him, how much he has progressed from a solid ski jumper to someone who could win major titles. Andreas Wank, the third of those that are not competing anymore. And this flight on 198 meters is actually just a perfect example that uh, he was definitely not born as a ski flyer. He was rather someone who preferred the normal hills where basically good takeoff strength was counting. And not too many of the days on ski flying hills were enjoyable for him. Manuel Fettner. He was definitely one of these guys who found their passion for ski flying or their ski flying skills very, very late. But also here in Planitza, that took place. Two hundred and twelve meters for the thirty year old Austrian. Actually took a bronze medal at the ski flying world championships with his team. But the Kulm ski flying hill slightly different than this one. Roman Kudelka, the second and also last Czech participant in this first round. Two hundred thirteen meters and uh, 
it's a bit of a mean thing. I mean, those flights are definitely not bad, but uh, the size of ski flying hills definitely killed the magic of the 200 meters limit a little bit. It looks like you're not really landing in the lower part of the landing slope, but still definitely an honorable result. Kamil Stoch. And that flight also a little symbol for the fact that he was not the Kamil we all knew. 206 meters. It was actually his, uh, let's say, last highest World Cup ranking since the 2009-2010 World Cup season. Not satisfied with the outcome of this competition, but also with the outcome of the whole season. And also the jury is noticing, well, except that flight from Machikot. It's not too extreme so far. Manuel Poppinger. Ninety-eight and a half meters. So another one added to those guys who didn't hit the 200. Bit of a shame for the bronze medalist with the team at the Ski Flying World Championships at home. That's his best World Cup season was not crowned in this first round, but of course everyone knew there will be a second chance and hopefully with a little more, mal more luck condition-wise. Taku Takeuchi. And that's a great ride by the Japanese. His season highlight definitely his fourth World Cup podium with uh, rank number three in Lahti. And now 217 meters for the man who's definitely having good essentials in terms of his flight system for being an awesome ski flyer. And he also showed that and now takes second position here behind Machekot. It's a lot calm before the storm, but we know that now Simon Aman was always on about delivering some awesome flights here. And look at the height, how high he's up in the air, and yet. He's landing above the hillsides. Ah, not completely, 224 and a half meters. That's half a meter, but he is just loving this flying hill. And also the cameraman love him when he's 10, 12, maybe 50 meters above the ground and nobody cares if he's landing such spe spectacular flights without the telemark except probably the judges but he has also quite the fan base in the spectators here Joachim Höwer of Norway
And if you're already angry on yourself after just having set the landing, it's quite a clear sign that this jump didn't went too well. Way too late there at the takeoff. But we also should mention that this hill compared to Vikasund depends a little less on just creating speed and so it didn't fully work out for him. And of course also the crowd is seeing what we are seeing right now and as soon as Peter Preutz is on the screen the noise level is increasing. Richard Freitag now. Oh, that's a great ride. Also here. Soon found out how to take this hill. 221 meters for the German. Another one of those who could do magic in the air if the shape is right and the energy is still left. And energy is just the keyword. Some people wondering why are people sometimes jumping the whole season so good and then here in Planitza not. It's just exhausting. The season itself, but especially those weekends of ski flying. And if you're not full of adrenaline and, and on top of your game, you're sometimes lose more than people would expect. But that was Daiki Ito. 209 and a half meters for the Japanese who finished two times third with his team in Oslo and uh, Kuopio. Missed out on the podium in his home World Cup in Sapporo, finishing fourth. But generally, a very consistent season after all for him. And once again, we can predict now goosebumps are safe. <laughs> 221 meters for Yuri Tepic. Who also had very special moments here in uh, Planitza and now that he's a retired ski jumper we can just say how many great shows he has delivered on this type of ski flying hills and especially here in Planitza. It was maybe one of the calmest jumps of him here but still quite valuable. It gives him the lead. And another explosion down in the crowd. And if the world record holder is coming down the ski flying hill, you always can expect an attack to the lead. 222 meters for Anders Schwanemehl. Who flew his world record a little more than one year ahead of this competition. But in that season he took his third World Cup victory in Sapporo. 
and you can see 222 meters are not enough for him. That basically speaks for itself. So 20 are down, Yuri Tepes leads ahead of uh, Simon Amann, Richard Freitag and Anders Vanemeer. Look how close those gaps inside the top six are. Remarkable, especially for Ski Flying Hill, where gaps could open more massively than anywhere else. And once again, we enjoy the replay of our current leader, Yuri Tepes. Nobody was attempting this hill like he did and if the flight was long enough for him he also was always on delivering some beautiful telemark landings now we're waiting for the top 10 of the ski flying ranking of the 2015-2016 season and the longer the day lasts the better the wind conditions get it's such a planitza morning in planitza and expect a great show of the last 10 in this first round That was rough on the edge for Daniel Andre Tande, but 215 meters, still quite a distance after the turbulences he has had here after takeoff. Almost about to lose his left ski, but he is able to compensate it. And that's also remarkable if you look on how many flight kilometers these guys have already made in this season and also bad crashes have been part of the Planitza history but luckily he was able to save that one Andreas Stiernen Quite the unlucky guy in that season. His team was just too strong that he would be a part of the gold medal at Kulm. But this time it was an equal match with uh, Anders Schwanemeer. 219 meters. <laughs> for the man from Trondheim who is not only a good ski flyer but also a very good athlete and I saw him recently at the Junior World Ski Championships in Oberwiesenthal and unlike some of his colleagues he was easily recognizable didn't change too much but probably also looking from today's perspective to this competition the intermediate result may not be good enough for him Michael Heiberg still fighting for the third position in the overall World Cup And that's a good benchmark he sets for Kenneth Gongness. We will see in a couple of minutes. 219 meters for the Austrians, who has won three competitions in a row just the month before. All of them in Finland. Two times in Lahti and once in Kuopio. And 
always enjoying being a ski flyer on this hill and now taking the lead. And it's getting even closer and closer at the very top. And here comes a man who is actually Japanese but also could be counted as a half Slovene if you listen to the noise of the crowd. Nuriaki Kasai! Just wow! Two hundred twenty-seven meters, and once again we are hearing the famous Planitza Planitza for from uh, Slavko Auzenik, which is played from two hundred twenty-five meters onwards. And the people here just love him so much, but. Uh, how could you not love this Japanese maniac? 43 years of age and jumping like a 23 year old. It's a crazy phenomenon. And also the fight for the podium spots inside the ski flying rankings are not clarified yet, except that Peter Priots would defend his title for the second consecutive time in a row. Severin Freund. A decent flight from the German, but as usual, since the rebuilding of the ski flying hill he was feeling that a tiny aspect was missing and so he's still waiting for his first podium on the ski flying hill even though and I think we are totally agreeing with each other he would definitely deserve it he had the victory inside on Thursday and tossed it a little bit away in the second round and only finished fourth and now He's best of the rest behind Kasai. Stefan Kraft. Only 22 years of age back then. But already reaching for the top. At least partially, we can say, particularly not in this jump, 217 meters, but let's not forget that he took his fourth of, so far, 21 World Cup victories in Zakopane that season. And we all know what has been happening ever since. And now it's a double for Alex Stöckel. Kenneth Gongnes. We already saw Michi Heiberg before. And now we will enjoy a flight of a talented Norwegian. And what a close comparison that was to his Austrian opponent. 260 meters loses a little out against Heiberg. Not quite the timing there at the takeoff. But otherwise, we can just conclude how much fun it was to watch him. And such a pity that he was so unlucky with many injuries that this season was remaining the best of his too short career. And up next is 
his teammate Yuan Andre Forfang. On every single day that weekend, he was standing on the podium. But how about this final? Yeah! He definitely did what was necessary for him. 226 meters and with that flight he is right up there in the top group. The man from Tromsø. Team Gold at the Ski Flying World Championships and also his first World Cup victory in TTC Neustadt in that season where his highlights but there was still a top three spot to win for him not only in the intermediate result but also at the ski flying rankings and he's definitely on a good way as we once again turn up the volume knob because the final Slovenian double is coming up right now, Robert Letici Kranjec. And look at that! The master of Planica has done it once again. 234 meters, the longest ride of this first round and that man was surely born for ski flying seven world cup competition he has won in his career the last one i have mentioned just two days ahead of this event and was the sixth victory on a ski flying hill only his first back then in the Ruka wasn't and now he's getting the party really started and the master of ceremonies is sitting on the bar right now Peter Priots one deep breath and and there he comes And no matter what the others did, he always managed to be one step ahead. 238 meters. And I mean, just listen to that. The star was born much earlier, but with that season he definitely became a hero for the home crowd. And it's just unique flying style. And also the ability to always set a nice landing. He even did that in his record flights and totally deserve the three times 20 star points from the judges and when you can just enjoy being a ski jumper and ski flyer you know you're definitely on your highest level so far and if you beat Robbie Kranjic on a ski flying hill you know you have a very good chance to win actually so that's the halftime standing, exactly 7 points, Preots is ahead of Kranjec. Johan Andre Vorfang still inside of the third place, which is opted by Nuriaki Kasai. Also two Germans inside the top 10. And Norway dominating in the second chart. And since the gaps are so small, the fight for a podium is 
quite a big one. Less than 15 points between rank number 3 and 14. And the other three Germans inside the last group. Goran Janus. What a remarkable season it was also for him as the head coach. And once again we are having a look on the top three. Once Doriaki Kazai has quit from ski jumping, maybe in 2048, <laughs> some scientists, please have a look on his career and try to explain what this guy was actually doing. The explanation why Robert Kranjec was so good is actually simple, it's just one word. Planitza and Peter Preutz was in a league of his own in that season. I was waiting for this tune. The world famous replay jingle which is also uniting Majesty and magic. Such a pleasure to listen to this and watch those small movies. Also, blockbusters were written in Planitza. Dramatic scenes, but also even romantic scores probably and so unlike the graphic says the start of the final round is not on 11 a.m. Central European time but just in a very short bit one snip one cut and we will be back what a picturesque picture at halftime here in Planica at the season final 2015-2016 we are waiting for the start of the very last round of this season and I think if you have ever been to Planica you know this feeling or even from home it's a bit of uh, sadness that the season is coming to an end Fascinating journey is always a bit of nostalgic feelings surrounding you, thinking back on what has happening, but also the joy of the forecast that there is still one round to go, one hopefully spectacular last round in that place which saw 39 World Cup finals until the last season which has been disturbed and also ended way too early due to COVID-19 But hopefully the future which is ahead of us is a little brighter. We are still waiting for the 2020 edition of the Ski Flying World Championships. Which would be the seventh held here in Planica after the first one in 1972. 1979. 1985, 1994, 2004 and 2010. But at first we will scroll through the start list. And uh, yeah, after what we have learned after the first round, 
The fight for the podium is already starting at Stefan Kraft, 14th ranked after the first round. But probably there is no way past the two Slovenes, which will conclude not only the second round, but also this ski jumping season. And Miran Tepish, the assistant race director, is definitely the best place to watch the Eagles soaring down. I personally had the pleasure to get a guided tour when this ski jump was reopened in 2015 with uh, Franzi Petek and uh, he was guiding our group around this whole venue. There's so much more to it than you can see from the TV images <laughs> and uh, we had the pleasure to watch one round of training from the judges tower and it's just an insane feeling to see the athletes passing you by in the air with more than 110 120 kilometers an hour and flying close to 250 meters as it was back then as we all know there have been some 250 meters plus flights in 2019 so we're starting the final round with start gate number seven which we also had at the beginning of the first round so the jury also is trying to give the first athletes great conditions for one last awesome flight so let's do this Andreas Wank is the opening man At least the 200 meters for him as a farewell flight. 206 to be exact, but this is definitely not the ideal image of an harmonic flight. Actually, But as we already pointed out also in the first round, it was definitely not his best discipline. Robi Kranjets waiting for the chairlift to take him up the mountain. And Jan Matura, the man who always started a jump with a smile. And he not only beats the green line, but he also beats the 200 meters limit. 203 and a half are giving him the lead for now. <laughs> and that's one flag. I mean, boy. Could be a proper weapon in foggy conditions. I mean, we had this at the Ski Flying World Championships in 2004 right here which were actually held in uh, February and that was not really Planitza like if we remember that it was snowy, it was foggy and it was even rainy but those dates in March are always phenomenal Stefan Hula
Yeah, boy. Two hundred sixteen meters for the pole, just one meter below his personal best distance. And if you feel you're so close, you also would like to beat it. And then it's a yeah, bit of an anger that you didn't make it. But how would you know when landing your jump? It's still giving you a great feeling after these long, long seasons. So, also Joachim Höher has definitely something to make up after the first round. Can he do better this time? Only a tiny bit, actually. 201 meters. A bit of a disappointing ending for the best World Cup season he has had in his career. Where he also scored his only podium, which was a third rank in Nishnitagio in December 2015. Even from that angle, everything which is down there at the outline and even behind it is just looking so small. No matter how big it actually is. Manuel Poppinger. Ah, oh, that's a decent flight by him. Two hundred and eighteen meters. That's more the range he liked to see himself at Heitz Kutin and Harald Rotlauer, the coaching duo of Austria back then. <laughs> There's just no feeling like having a great flight and uh, the special pair of skis for the overall World Cup winners are already standing there. And Angela Nishek is opening the Slovenian party in this second round. Maybe he was going for a little too much there. 198 and a half meters, the only guy so far to miss the 200 meters. He probably put every little thing he still was finding into this jump, but if you have to work too much for it, then it doesn't... come out the way you want it to be sometimes and so he's losing quite a couple of positions but for every single Slovenian that makes it into this final it is always a special moment Stefan Leier Looks like to join Lanishek in the club of the non 200s. No, ah, he doesn't. Exactly 200 meters, so. Well, at least another shot for that one. But yeah, his basic strengths just don't pay off too much on this flying hill. 
which has its own rules, its own characteristics. And so he drops down to third position. Johan André Vorfang, still the third spot in the ski flying rankings in his sights. Kamil Stoch. Can he make up a tiny bit at least? At least he aims to hold his position, but if we compare this to so many of great flights he has delivered here in Planica, it doesn't seem to be him who's jumping here. Always a lack of timing there at the takeoff, also caused by issues he has had with his in-run position, which still occur from time to time. And especially in ski flying, it's such a sensitive environment. But no matter how bad, at least in his relations, the work there has been, he always finds his smile. Karl Geiger improved his personal best distance in the first round. Can he even top that? No, he can't. Not quite the same jump, but also not exactly the same conditions as in round number one. 206 and a half meters. We're still keeping it kind of slow in the first phase of this final round. And you can also see the tension in his face expression. Rank number three. But the number of those that are happy that the season is over with this day is uh, very, very short. Not only amongst the spectators, but also amongst the guys in this field. And uh, David Kubatsky is closing off the first group. And makes it a Polish double lead with Kamil Stoch. Two hundred and five meters. Uh, also a bit too late, but it's just a typical sign for a long season that the movements at the takeoff are being kept short by the athletes. And also the landings don't go as smooth as usual. But who will take it? Stoch or Kubatski? And it's not a Polish double lead. Manuel Poppinger still between these two. Only 0 0.7 points behind Stoch. And I think in that replay it was quite obvious, but it happens to the best athletes that one season might not be as consistent as they used to be. And then they are trying for looking for a new approach and then suddenly it gets better. Another one of those classic Slovenian gems. Nagolici is warming up the crowd for the last 20 jumps or rather flights of the seasons and the Slovenian flags are waved all around.
Danica is part of the Slovenian heritage. That's for sure. And now Daiki Ito will open the second group. And that's the first real flight we get to see in the second round. And even the calm Japanese is having a small celebration there in the outrun. 229 meters. And even the people who have had a small nap after the first round and probably a long night ahead are hopefully waked up again. <laughs> That's quite the clear lead. Almost 40 points ahead of Kamil Stoch. And probably the field will now be divided into two parts, which hasn't quite been the case after the first round. Daniel Andre Tonde. No turbulences this time and it's working well. That's it. He surely was telling himself. And thank God this time everything went smooth. 200. 33.5 meters. Quite the ideal takeoff, and this time he was able to keeping it all together. And once again, you're not disturbed. You can maintain and even enhance your speed in the air. And boom! There is not only a nice bit of heartbeat, but also the new lead for him. The Slovenian army always taking care of the in-run track. <laughs> and Manuel Fetna. Two hundred and sixty meters quite the definite third place for him. I was a bit too late and uh, the unsynchronized skis after the takeoff. Totally correct the trade for him. And uh, we definitely can congratulate him not only for quite a good season final, maybe except this uh, messed up landing, but also for his master degree. Vincent de Combe-Sevoir, the sole Frenchman. Always doing a good job on these type of hills. And so it is also a farewell on a high for him. 212.5 meters. And for one last time, he also managed to put it all together. Interesting way to keep his head in the air to be even more aggressive. With every little inch you have, rank number four. Well done for Vincent, who says salut in his own style. Roman Kudelka.
Mm -hmm. Well done also to him and immediately there is a smile of the inner child. 216 meters. And immediately after takeoff he starting his trademark moves with his arms and also with his mouth. The tongue has disappeared but <laughs> it's still a unique fascination to watch him. And so it's uh, rank number three for him. Kenneth Gongness. His main task, try to minimize the gap to Michael Heiberg. And look at that! How he did this. 239 meters. Of course, that's the Norwegian distance. The small things that didn't work out for him in the second round totally went into the right direction this time. And a fabulous telemark down there. Totally unity among the style judges and so it is a clear lead but it remains a Norwegian double lead and uh, so Michi Heiberg knows he has quite the task for the second round because Gangnes looks to be able to make up a couple of places and so maintain his third spot. Stefan Kraft And these guys really pull out one last great show. 222 meters for the Austrian. Who was already at 246.5 meters in his personal best distance. Well, that was in Wiekeschund. It would take less than one year until he flew a new world record. Andreas Tjernen, he even wasn't part of the quadruple which finished on top of the podium on Saturday. It might not have made a difference but Alexander Stöckel was sticking to his principle of performance 216 and a half meters. We can also say the Norwegian squad was good enough that Stöckel could afford to leave such a great ski flyer as Andreas Stjernen out for the team competitions. Rank number five and so two of his country fellas overtook him with Gangnes on first place and Tande on second. And Taku Taku Uchi. It was just a treble of Japanese jumpers, but these three have done a great job. 
on this very day. 215 meters for Taku, who welcomed his third child to the world in April. The Bronx medalist. of the Olympic Games 2014 <laughs> and those videos and images are surely well maintained not only by Daiki Ito you have to collect the last memories before the long spring break is ahead Mache Kot a very strong first round from him, but can he keep that up in the second one? Yeah, quite a bit, at least in terms of the distance. But 222 meters. So much trouble before landing the jump. Yeah, uh, the teller mark is one, but uh, yeah, the overall landing shape looks a bit odd. And at least the Finnish judge and also the Slovene give him a reasonable mark for that. So. Two thirds of this final round are already done. Gangnes leads ahead of Kraft and Tande. But the best ten are yet to come. We were predicting a ten man fight for the third podium spot. Perhaps it is already open, perhaps not, but at least Kenneth Gangnes can be quite sure that his flight, his second flight on 239 meters would be enough to maintain the bronze rank in the overall World Cup standings. And the entertainers here in the stadium, pros everywhere you look, know how to even increase the atmosphere and the level of noise. And Anders Schwanemehl has the pleasure to open up the final 10. Lots of ambition already at the takeoff. 230 meters for the Norwegian. And he and his team, spoiler alert, will not only have to celebrate Gangnes' third place in the World Cup overall. And right behind that kind of gongness, Fanemir takes second position. Richard Freitag, one of the two Germans with chances on a top 10 spot at the final. And he's going for it. Two 
227 meters and uh, if you are as close to your personal best as Freitag was with this jump, only four meters were missing, you definitely have reasons to celebrate. We didn't see too many jumps of this quality by him in the past season. So hopefully that will come back very, very soon, even though he couldn't keep the Norwegians behind him and drops to fourth place. And this is actually one of the calmest spots in whole Planitza. The warming room. And Simon Aman already offered us some spectacle in the first round and even the second round looks to be very similar to that or even better how about this one <laughs> oh that's just fantastic 238 and a half meters i don't even know how to call it maybe beautiful madness I think that definitely counts. If he could do a high five with Miran Tepes up there in the judges tower. Look at that, they're even on the same level. And he has to open up the flight system a little bit to be able to land it. And with so much adrenaline, also your knees forgive you that you gave them quite the task. It's not enough for the lead, but the result is not the central aspect of this experience. And here we go once again with the Slovenian orchestra, Yuri Tepes. Not quite the ending he has been hoping for and that is also the metaphoric bridge to the news we got this week. Yuri retired from the sport of ski jumping and yeah we surely would have loved to show a better jump in that moment of time but let's just memorize him as one great magician in the air and one of those guys who collected five times the 20 star points which was at this unforgettable second World Cup win of his which was less than one year ahead of this competition but where the actual story of the super champion Peter Pereyots was started Michael Heiberg and his favorite opponent Kenneth Gangnes is still up in front and even though this was a phenomenal flight of Michi he couldn't do anything about it. 235.5 meters. And there also the theoretical chance of robbing Kenneth the third spot in the overall World Cup has passed. And also no chance for the Austrian anymore to collect the third place in the ski flying standings. But however, there was so much to enjoy for him this season. And also that second intermediate spot is a nice one. And the gang at the top is preparing 
for their last mission. And now it's Silver in front. Vander Schuster, the cat coach, already giving the first feedback, 225 meters. It was just a jump on this, let's call it Freund scale. He was always able or close to the hill size, but not pulling out the major distances he would have needs on the ski flying hill. And that's definitely one open mission in his career. <laughs> and it's quite the déjà vu, only that he didn't have the chance to win the World Cup title anymore in that season. And the adrenaline is constantly kicking in. Johan Andre Vorfang. Can he make it four podiums in four days? Oh, wow! I'm sure he can. What a beauty. 245 meters. Yeah, and sometimes just the pictures speak for themselves. He couldn't set a telemark, but it doesn't even matter. The gap he has created to the others is big enough anyway. And it's also a personal best distance. And that gives him a very good forecast in terms of the ski flying standings actually. Only Noriaki Kasai can prevent him from taking the third spot in the special ranking. And the Japanese dinosaur is going for it. It's a nail biter. For the third place in this competition and also for the third place inside this ranking. Two hundred thirty one point five meters for the man who had his fifth hundred individual World Cup start just three days before and jumped with a golden bib with the five hundred written for him. But it's not enough for him. He remains second. And so Johann Andre Vorfang secures the third spot in the ski flying. And of course he knew it already in that very moment. And we're about to close this valley of madness off with the two last remaining flights Robert Kranjets just wow just wow 
233 meters. And if we didn't know that he was actually happily ma married to his wife Spela, you could think that Robbie is actually married to this flying hill, the Letalnica Bratov Gorishek. It's just a match between these two. 210 times Robbie was flying past the 200 meters limit in his career. A record he set and which might never be broken. A master of his art. And at that moment also the master of ceremonies. And the man of the season and man of the day and man of almost everything in that season has the enjoyable task to close this off. Ladies and gentlemen, let's enjoy the last flight of Peter Priutz. And that is how you finish a season in style. <laughs> and that is what's happening if pretty much everyone, or let's erase that pretty much, if everyone is enjoying you, and even if we are not at Formula One, also a bit of <laughs> champagne or sparkling wine is already prepared. Not only this day was kind of a Slovenian national holiday, the whole weekend was just a pure Piero party. He was just owning it in almost every part of the season. And even in that moment where everything was done, he sets a tremendous telomark. And the party just wouldn't stop for him. He gets another 3 times 20 style points from the judges and crowns himself for the 15th time in course of just a single season as the winner of a World Cup individual competition. And that's maybe one of the worst disadvantages for a coach that you couldn't be with your athlete at the same at the very same location in the outrun at the same time but most likely the way down to the outrun was never as much pleasure as in this moment. And they even already start singing the national anthem. He has turned Planitza into an ocean of flags. And normal people like you and me 
into Maniacs and uh, as sometimes rough coach Goran Janus into a man who cried tears of joy. That's it, the very final results of the very final competition of the season. Peter Preutz and Robi Kranjec celebrating a Slovenian double victory and Johan Andre Vorfang makes it four in four for the fourth time on this weekend including this team competition he stood on the podium but that's also valid for Kranjec and Priots because these two of course were included in the Slovenian team who took the second rank in the team competition And the only non-Slovenian podium setters on that weekend were actually Stefan Kraft, Manuel Poppinger, Manuel Fettner and Michael Heiböck who became third in the team competition by just 0.1 points behind Slovenia. But we all couldn't imagine what would have happened if also the Slovenian equipe would have won the team competition. With the team party after the competition, it might have been an even longer afternoon than it already had been. If this jingle wasn't produced before, you would think they just have made it for him. But they actually they didn't. This one is in use for a very, very long time already. And the producers, cameraman, everyone that belongs to the team that is the delivering the coverage are also pure experts and know how to do this. And even in the judges tower there was a big round of applause. Things you only get to see in Planitza actually. And there we have the confirmation for what I have already announced before. Johann André Vorfang claims third place in the Ski Flying World Cup behind Robbe Kranjec on second and of course Peter Preutz, the super champion as they called him from this weekend on, who took this title for the third time in a row. 
And that ranking is just no coincidence. It's basically what the whole weekend in Planitza has been telling the others. And the World Cup spots number one and two were already safe before for Preutz and Freund. And Kenneth Gongnis defended his third spot. And unfortunately the only man on the first chart which is not active anymore. And Robby Kranjec has climbed up the order thanks to his good results inside the season as well. On rank number 13 ahead of his country fellow Domen Preutz. Who was not allowed to ski fly in that season yet. You might think the images and also the music have been put on replay and the spoiler alert these two things will not be the only ones since we are at the World Cup final we will also come to the award ceremonies later on in course of this broadcasting but now let's hear from today's winner Congratulations Peter Preutz, not much to say from our side, uh, thank you for this amazing day, for this amazing winter. Yeah, thank you all for congrats and cheering and encouraging me. It was really an amazing season, uh, a long one, but nice one. Um, it was a bit easier if I would be, um, it was easier season than if I would be struggling between 15 place or something, but uh, now it's... Uh, Really great season and uh, an awesome final. I'm just glad it's over. Thank you very much, Peter. Thanks. At one spoiler I already made before has been cleared now. Norway has won the nation ranking clearly ahead of Slovenia and Germany actually. So uh, also they will get their rewards later on. And as usual, at least the Slovenian anthem will not come from a tape or an mp3 or something. Of course, a real orchestra will play it. And those are the cups for today's podium setters. Alexander Stöckel has made his way down and can't wait to congratulate his athletes for their achievements in course of this season. As also these were quite numerous. Of course, it's a thankful claim. I feel Slovenia, but isn't that the truth? And those of you who are watching us right now, who haven't made it to Planica, I can just tell, as soon as you get the chance, do it. Of course, preferably during 
an event such as this one but also outside of that if you get the chance just do it you have to see this So as it looks from here we are pretty much set for the victory ceremony. And the FIS fanfare is the latest signal for that. So, the 29th and final World Cup competition of the 2015-2016 season has found its podium setters, Johan André Furfang for Norway on rank number 3 with just 20 years of age. And the second place went to the ski flying veteran Robert Letici Kranjets. The man with the eagle hat in his hands. And of course, there was no doubt about that the man of the season, the man who broke many, many records in this one winter would take the victory on home ground Peter Prius And the voice of Planitza, Bojan Makovets, is not only giving a shout out to those who are delivering the cups and every little prize they <laughs> find, but he's also the man who announces the athletes and their performances unlike nobody else. Always drops the distance they have jumped in their own language. And he's not only doing it in uh, Planitza, actually, also in Val di Fiemme, and also at the Ladies World Cup in Jupno, for instance, and is also a host of various other events in Slovenia. Quite the colleague, we can tell you. And of course, as we already had the a cappella version, we can now also listen to the instrumental together with the a cappella of the Slovenian national anthem. After, obviously, the next presence. <laughs> were delivered. And the happiness 
just won't leave Goran Janus. Zdraulica, a poem written by Franze Prescherin, later turned into the Slovenian national anthem. It simply means cheers and uh, I think was there ever a better occasion in ski jumping for the Slovenians to shout this one actually. I don't think so. So, but of course we are not done yet with the ceremonies. The next one is already waiting for us and also the athletes are waiting to get their honor. And this time we are not talking about the men, but about the women. And we already have seen the two that are present. In course of our broadcasting, and the thir first one of them is another Slovenian home hero, and also for her, it's a nice honor to receive her awards in front of her home crowd. Even though the women are obviously are still waiting for their first ski flying events. And of course, I am talking about the third placed Maya Utic. The women have had their World Cup final the season before, but back then there was no Slovenian on the podium. She was the first to make it with 908 points during the 2015-2016 season. The runner-up, a veteran of women's ski jumping, was not with us, but we surely should mention her. Daniela Eraschko stolz of Austria with 1139 points. And for the third time in her career, after 2012-2013 and 2013-2014, it was Sara Takanashi of Japan who took the overall World Cup title. 1610 points. The shortest athlete was once again the biggest one in terms of the results. Well, that was actually the last time 
the ladies overall World Cup winner and the two podium setters were crowned in uh, Planitza. Ever since then the award ceremonies took place at the venue of the World Cup Finals. For the men, for the women I should say. <laughs> And there it is, the most wanted award for a female ski jumper. The Crystal Globe. And of course we will also hear the anthem of the winner of that ranking. So here's the Japanese national anthem. It's superbly great to see that all the spectators were staying and not leaving after the competition has finished to enjoy the very last moments of this special season. And from that perspective it also gets clear how massive this flying hill is. They call it the Snow Queen but sometimes you get even more than just respect of this slope. So and up next is the ceremony for the Ski Flying World Cup ranking. Of course it was once again dominated by the Slovenians, but Norway was the nation with most athletes in the top 10. With Andreas Tjernen, Daniel Andre Tande on rank 10 and 9, Kenneth Gangnes on 4th and Johan Andre Vorfang on 3rd. A victory in Vikersund gave him the lead in the ski flying standings but as soon as that weekend was over he already lost it again but Robert Kranjec was a well-deserved runner-up in this ranking with 400 points 52 more than Johan Andre Vorfang but of course again it was Super Champion Peter Preutz who scored the most with 530 for the third consecutive time he has won that ranking for him Ski Flying World Champion and Ski Flying World Cup winner he was besides 
the four hits tournament overall win and of course the World Cup win which was yet to honor It was his last World Cup victory here in uh, Planica, the 15th of that season, as I've mentioned, and two more he has added towards that, the season after in uh, Sapporo and this past season in Lillehammer on the large hill in course of the Raw Air tournament, his 23rd and up to date last World Cup victory. The most successful Slovenian ski jumper of all time. And yet he only turns 20 years of age, 28 years of age this year, so we might be prepared for even more to come. Yeah, and you know what's going to come now. I'm just saying Straulica. And so there was just one individual ceremony left, actually. The overall World Cup. And this time we will see two unused faces, at least from the award ceremonies, on the podium. And the first one of them is Norwegian Kenneth Gognes. The winner of the Norman Hill competition in Lillehammer this season. And the misfortune once again we have to say unfortunately began for him just a couple of months later when he tore his ACL even more we enjoy watching him being very satisfied very happy with himself and the same also goes for Severin Freund
it was not too easy for him the year before where he won the overall title in a dramatic way not all spectators were totally fair to him this time obviously it was a little different also thanks to this man 22 podiums 15 individual victories a point gap of 813 to second ranked Freund a total score of 2303 points which makes it more than 79 points in average there was never a clear winner of the overall World Cup as Peter Preutz in this season. And there was no way that the crowd would get any quieter. No way, literally. Lots of luggage <laughs> for the Super Champion to bring home. Probably even a new shelf to be built, but that's definitely quite a nice task to do. The year before he was standing at the spot where Freund is standing in these pictures and he has turned it around in a remarkable way. But he himself was a fair runner-up the season before. Immediately congratulated Freund to his success. And in that season it was too clear that even mathematics couldn't do anything about it. And of course once again, one last time, it's time for Zdraulica.
I'm feeling a little with the crowd which is standing behind the podium so that they can't see the athletes but no matter where you do it in the outrun there's always people that uh, couldn't watch you from in front so uh, that's how it is and last but not least we have the ceremony for the nations cup winners and they are already lining up here on the right hand side of the pictures of course we are talking about the norwegian squad led by head coach alexander stöckel and i remember very well being at a famous pub in the heart of Kranska Gora, this winter sports town, only a couple of kilometers away from uh, Planitza and uh, meeting Alex and having a chat with him. He was just so satisfied about the outcome of the season and I was telling him, well, luckily, of course, jokingly, luckily you guys have won the nation's ranking otherwise we would just have heard the slovenian national anthem over and over again in every single man's ceremony and he was just saying yeah luckily we could avoid that but of course we equally acknowledge that it was just an outstanding performance of peter priots in the first place but all in all, also a totally deserved victory in this special ranking by the Scandinavians. We have such a big team that probably n not everyone has caught a spot on this podium. And especially these award ceremonies always show how many people are actually involved in such a team. It's not only the coaches and the athletes, service technicians, media officers, physiotherapists, doctors, etc. etc. And so that success is definitely a result of great teamwork. And slowly we are coming to the end.